talking and I'm working with anti-capitalists and anti-colonial modes of existence is really also, and through the body, it's um, reclaiming the autonomy that our bodies have within society and the capacity that we have actually to um, emancipate both from our bodies but also collectively. So what I mean with that is um, uh, to take it from the lens of queerness, so I'm a queer person and that's also something that I bring within my work. Um, and queer, like embodying queerness, is a way to distance oneself from the norms that we have asked, uh, been asked to perform. So either you have to perform as a male or as a female and opening that spectrum to actually how do I feel and how do I want to embody my gender. Um, creating ways in which I can uh, express and use my body to emancipate from these codes that feel oppressive, reclaim autonomy, but also to create a community with other people that is also advocating for the same. So I'm also an activist, um, I'm a queer activist, mostly working with queer and migrant refugee issues. And so the word, the word of yeah, community is also very important. Exploring ways in which I can move that are non-normative, that give me power, that give me agency, and that, uh, and with power and agency, I mean that give me a spectrum and choose from ways of moving, ways of performing, uh, ways of interacting that I can choose from, while at the same constructing that uh, autonomy within a community. Uh, there is other ways in which I'm, uh, in which I understand the body, and that would touch uh, more in the. Yeah, both in the, because coloniality and capitalism work together, of course, so it's um, it's also challenging this Western idea that the, that the body is separated from the environment and that is separated from the other. This whole idea of individuality, which was indeed a question and challenge through the whole COVID uh, pandemic, we're actually interconnected towards the whole world and what I do influences the rest of the of the people. Um, and through that I actually I, I, I feel there is a lot of um, power in that realization. Hopefully or I have the hope that this awareness uh, brings us something powerful in our society because being together is not about uh, feeling oppressed, it's about uh, feeling connected to the world that we are part of. Definitely, I think that COVID has bring an extra awareness to that. Uh, but I would also say that I was already busy through um, ancestral indigenous knowledge about these notions and within my work also in how I work with, uh, with, the, with the scenery and how I treat my body as well, yeah. So one of the things that um, yeah that come to mind first is also kind of hacking up because capitalism has made us believe that that there is nothing else than capitalism that of course that there is no other way of living than capitalism capitalism has been yeah 500 years like I mean late capitalism even less but if we count it from like the whole colonial structure like 500 years compared to the whole history of humankind. So we do have had, there is a lot of knowledge in how communities used to live before pre-capitalist times were actually uh, sustainable with the environment. That's the only difference of like, of, of capitalism, huh? that it's uh, not living sustainably with the environment, that is exploiting the hierarchy of we are humans, so we are above nature, above animals versus previous, um, ways of living that we're considering that we are part of a bigger ecosystem and and so I'm saying that to say that um, we are locked in a in a dialectical uh, or in a matrix that don't allow us to see actually how oppressive that is but if you really go and see the lives of people people is not like Dignity and happiness is not something that you can buy and people really, I, I see people really have the need to... I can also say that, for example, from my experience of being bicultural and living in Colombia and the Netherlands and people here in the Netherlands that is a bit more individualistic may have some of the resources 
that people in Colombia don't have, they yearn for some more hard warm relation towards the others and the environment. So that's already like when we say like, yes, you can do everything and it's freedom. This is also questioning because they have sell, capitalism has sell to us an idea of freedom that, um, that I also challenge. So some of the things that I want to work uh, within the workshop and I do with my workshop is bringing awareness. So um, political awareness and intersectional awareness to what is the position that we take in this matrix of power. So I'm talking about race, I'm talking about class, I'm talking about gender, I'm talking about sexuality, ableness. Um, so how can these political frameworks bring us awareness to the positions that we take in society uh, and how we can action from that positionality that is in the end of pressing us all in different, uh, in different ways because we have different types of oppressions and privilege um, to hopefully bring awareness to how we can work together towards a non-oppressive uh, mode of existence. So there is a series of combinations of bringing up exercises, mostly like bringing these um, analytical and political frameworks into embodied practices. I am also kind of uh, being aware that I don't want to spoil also the exercises, but so we will be doing this through embodied practices. I can imagine that the people that come to this workshop is people that is already interested in questioning these things in their life in becoming politically aware that they believe in emancipation and liberation and that they also are curious how these things connect through the body because these discussions normally are dissociated. Uh, so any knowledge that they can bring and the ideas that we bring these discussions together, I also like this way of uh, having dialogue in which is not me just educating but also really letting people talk and that we hopefully can dialogue with our uh, with words and also with our bodies. So any knowledge, any interest, if you want to share something, is very welcome experiences. I'm tackling into that we are an ecosystem and the idea that we do not exist without the collective. This is also mm -hmm. a Western idea. So I'm going to bring a concept from, uh, yeah, from indigenous, um, from Amerindian cosmogonies, in which they talk about the body territory. And the body territory is basically a concept in which the body inhabits the territory, but the entities of the territory also inhabit the body. That's also culture, the ways that we live. So what we eat, what we believe in, the stories that we tell, the identities that we ascribe to are all part of who we are. And this is like intertwined within the collective. So I, I do not, this, this, I don't ascribe, and also I don't come from this, uh, also because I'm not European, this is not something that I have ever seen as a dichotomy. Mm -hmm. uh, the individual is always connected to a collective and the question is how we can negotiate um, our own autonomy, free will within the collective and how we can actually see being part of the collective not as something that is oppressive and that takes away agency, but as something that is strengthens us and gives us agency and gives us joy. Because being part and being part of something is something that we as human beings inherently need. This is a human need that we all have, feeling connected to, feeling belonging. It's also an invitation for people that if they don't need to, because sometimes we feel um, a bit intimidated when we don't know so much. So yeah. just a reminder that you don't need to know a lot about these concepts to join, that if you are curious, uh, that is enough reason to join and that a lot of these things is not, again is not something that we're going to be discussing in length but that we're going to be practicing with uh, with physical exercises with embodied practices that connect heart and word body and mind um, feel and thinking together great thank you very much paula and looking forward pleasure bye bye wow.